Welcome to News Click. The Government of India has recently published a bill titled the Indian Ports Bill 2022. Several organizations, including the Water Transport Workers Federation of India and the state governments along the Indian coast, have opposed this bill. The organization and the state governments have claimed that this bill will encroach into the powers of the state government and will lead to more privatization of the minor ports as well. To discuss more, we have with us Mr. Narendra Rao, the General Secretary of the Water Transport Workers Federation of India. Welcome, sir. So, to begin with, uh, can you just explain what is the uh, bill proposed by the union government intends to do? There is an uh, earlier bill which is existing titled the Indian Ports Act 1908 and the proposed bill is titled as Indian Ports Bill 2022. What is the basic difference between these two and what are the uh, issues you are flagging against this bill? First of all, I would like to thank all the viewers, those who are going to view this video. This is in regard to the, the recent move of the government of India to introduce the new bill called Indian Ports Bill 2022. Already there is an act called Indian Ports Act 1908. That means the bill, that is the act, Indian Ports Act 1908 has been formulated before very long time. Now the government feels it should be amended or modified or whatever it is. The Indian Ports Act 1908, the government wanted to repeal and introduce the new draft called Indian Ports Bill 2022. What is its impact and what would be its repercussion if it is become an act? First of all, the Indian Ports Act 1908 deals about the functioning of various ports in the country. India as a continent, everybody knows at its three sides, Bay of Bengal, Indian Ocean and Arabic Ocean. In three oceans, there are nine coastal states. In these nine coastal states, there are 187 minor ports are there and 11 major ports are there. The major ports are controlled and managed by the government of India, whereas the minor ports are under the control of the state governments, particularly those who are in the coastal states. Now, what is the impact? Why many of the state governments, particularly the state of coastal states, why they are opposing? This bill will bring all the minor ports under the State Maritime Development Council. It is called a council. In this council, there are 21 peoples will be there. 21 representatives will be there. Out of this 21 majority, that means 14 to 15 members will belong to government of India under the Ministry of Shipping. This council, this National Maritime De Development Council chairman will be shipping minister. Thereby, any majority decision will be taken by this council will dominate, will dominate the coastal states. Now the coastal states is having the minor ports. These minor ports are, the state governments are developing with the help of private partners under PPP model, public-private partnership. Thereby, the state governments are getting the revenue share from the parties, from the private parties. That is separate agenda. Whatever it is given to private parties, we are opposing that is separate agenda. But this bill will be encroaching the state government's power. So whatever they are getting as a revenue from PPP model shareholders, this revenue will ultimately go to the government of India. That is number one. Number two, the national level state development maritime council will be appointed and people will be recruited by the government of India. Thereby, the state government cannot appoint any of the state-owned youth, those who have studied and they are expecting employment opportunity from these governments. Number three, all these ports will be controlled by them. Number four, what they say, for each and every port, there is a port conservator. There is a port conservator, he is the chief. 
this fourth conservator will be appointed by the government of India. Whereas now, in each and every coastal states, there is a state maritime board is there. This state maritime board will be headed by the IIS officer and controlled by the state level transport minister. But when it is taken over by the government of India, the IIS officers will be losing their post. There will not be state maritime board rather than it will pave the way for developing the National State Maritime Development Council. That council will be authorized and they are having every power. Thereby, each and every states are opposing. Our Federation, Water Transport Workers Federation of India has already submitted our views, our suggestion, our amendment in regard to this Indian Ports Bill 2022. Now, I will give you comparison. What is the difference between 1908 Act and this bill. In the 1908 Act, there is a power for the port conservator. If a particular ship is coming to the port, they have to pay the port related charges. That is mooring. Mooring means a ship which is coming to the port and moving from each and every port, they have to pay some charges to the port. Those fund will be credited in the port's account. There is a separate account, port's account. Every port will be maintaining port's account these funds will be deposited in the fund from that port account. The money will be utilized for workers, salary, graduate, leave salary, pension, etc. Now, a new act shows no such requirement. No shipping company, no stevedores, no big corporate companies need not pay anything by this new act. Similarly, if your port is getting visited by a ship, the Ship should give what is the total ton capacity in the ship to be discharged. What is the cargo which has come to be discharged? Based on that tonnage, the ship has to, the ship owner has to pay tonnage charges to the port. Now, a port conservator will go and inspect how much tonnage of a cargo is there in the ship. Now, the new act says no power has been given to the port conservator. Conservator will not go and visit any ship. He may not decide what is the cargo. Thereby, the shipping company can unilaterally say, this is my cargo, this much of ton I have brought up. So, no inspection will be taken over there. So, this kind of differentiation is there. Thereby, what they say, that is for ease of doing business, they want to develop the shipping cartels, multinational companies by giving this concession. Okay, let them give concession, but not at the cost of workers' welfare, workers' salary, workers' graduity. So, what are the existing uh, amendments? What are the existing rules? It is already in the 1908 Act, should replace. It should also come into the new bill. Otherwise, the worker will not accept, the trade union leaders may not accept. Similarly, the state governments already started opposing this bill. The Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu has very recently, before 10 days, issued a, order, issued a letter which he has written to the central government. This coastal, coastal states will oppose that. Similarly, the Penarai Vijayan, Honorable Minister of Kerala, and Mamta Banerjee, Minister of West Bengal, these states are coming under the coastal states. So, they are also opposing. Finally, what we would like to say to the viewers, this is very, very dangerous and detrimental on both sides. One side, it will be spoiling the federalism of the country by encroaching, by poking their nose in the power of the statement. In another way, in another hand, it will be taking away all the rights and financially the ports will be getting affected by this arc. Thereby, the port workers will be losing their salary benefits of like uh, retiremental benefit, uh, other terminal benefit, so that in both angles we are opposing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for joining us.